What's up guys, it's Matter here, and today we're going to be reacting to another Brandon Herrera video, and this is another old one. Uh, this is The Truth About I.O. Interordinate. So I believe these guys are, I don't know if they're a gun manufacturer or if they're a gun distributor, uh, but yeah, I think this is a, a takedown of them, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe it's, you know, pro them, maybe the, the title's just clickbaity, I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, I'll link to the original video down below, let's jump into it. Hey there everybody, I'm the AK Guy, and on September 23rd, I flew out to Palm Bay, Florida to visit the I.O. facility for myself. This is what everybody wants to know about probably the AK community's most controversial company. This is the truth about I.O. Okay, so if he's, if he's going there, I'm assuming he's on good terms with them and this is not going to be a takedown video. I.O. First, just a quick overview of the trip. I was invited to the I.O. annual Riders and Buyers Conference, meaning their big ticket distributors and media got to see their new products for 2016 and tour the inner workings of the facility. The first thing that I have to say is that Uli and the rest of the I.O. staff were amazing hosts. It was very well put together from an event standpoint. The first night there was more of a schmooze and booze type thing with the distributors and uh, I.O. welcoming us to their facility, but I went right to work talking with the shop guys and getting a better idea of what actually happens in the back. The guys that worked there were actually pretty cool to talk to, and they were all too happy to talk with me about any questions that I had. Oh yeah, and they had some pretty cool toys on display. I swear Uli could put on his own World War II reenactment. <laughs> but after that, it was back to the hotel, time to get some sleep. The next morning, we were well rested and loaded up to go back to I.O. The morning part was some more welcome. Man, young Brandon, it's just... Uh, I, I can't get over the one comment that somebody commented on. I think it was the first video we reacted to that was like an older video and they said he looks exactly the same but not the same at all and i can't get over that every time i see him now it's just it's like uh uncanny valley on brandon herrera and then uli the president of io went through some of their new product lines including some new stuff for 2016. hint hint wink wink now came the big part the whole reason i came to io in the first place lunch no just kidding it was the factory tour they didn't let us film in the back, but they did let us see every part of the process, and I was soaking it all up and taking notes. They did release these pictures that you're seeing now for the media folks and that they took for us. I learned a lot during this part and made a lot of conclusions, but we'll get to that part in a minute. After all that was over, it was range time. So we followed up to the local police department range, and right now they've got it all set up to show us the new product lines for 2016, including one non-commercial, non-civilian post-dealer uh, machine gun, which is really cool. So let's go check out what they got. I got to talk with Uli a little bit as we were packing up on the range, but we'll get to that in a second too. Now I know, I'm a tease, just bear with me. Once range day was over, we all met at a bar and grill on the beautiful Florida beach, relaxed, had a great time, said our goodbyes as we trickled off back to the hotel. The next morning, I flew back home. Florida was beautiful, but it was good to be back. Once I was home, my job wasn't quite done yet. I actually picked up one of their older guns from their facility in Monroe, North Carolina, just to compare and get a better idea on where they were coming from to get where they are now. Now the part you've all been waiting for. What do I think of IO now? Some of the stuff I heard about IO, I was able to confirm, but some stuff did surprise me. So let's just go through it one by one. Starting with the good column, moving into the bad column. The good. IO now uses all nitrided barrels, which I think is a good move. They also mill their bolts from billet steel now, meaning hopefully they won't have more problems with this anymore. Their CNC machines were actually pretty impressive, and they mill a lot more parts than I first thought, which is a plus in their column. They also have a lifetime warranty, which I prefer not to need, but it's always nice to have. From what I've seen, they're actually pretty good at honoring it, too. In Uli's words, I offer a lifetime warranty. I offer, you know, excellent customer support, and if there's any issue whatsoever, we mm -hmm. fix or, re or replace. You get the point. The bad. Let's go back to that conversation between me and Uli one more time. And I will, I will dare any of our products compared to an Arsenal or to a Yugo. And uh, I'm, you know, I know our product is at least even, even not superior than an Arsenal. That is a very bold claim, especially a bold claim to make after having so many failures out on the Shoguns and prototypes on range day. <laughs> Somewhere in there, you're good. 
They said it was bad ammo, which may have played a part in it, but we had a sneaking suspicion that a lot of it was due to overgassing and poor head spacing. One thing I was prepared for and was able to confirm is more of a metallurgy. So, so is, are these like a, a cheap gun? Because I'd never heard of these before. Interordnance. Um, I'm going to read these comments, see if... Uh, I want to just send an update from IO. I'm uh, the guy who a, whose AK blew up in my face. IO statement, even though the AK fired at a battery because it was surplus ammunition, the warranty is null and void. Even my guns have told the owner of the company should take up uh, golf and not guns because the rifle fired at a battery, not the ammo. Okay. Do not... Okay, so yeah, do not trust the IO. So yeah, the, are these guys still around? This is eight years ago. Seems like they have a lot of issues, judging from the comments. Good point. Casted trunnions. Is this getting a little nitpicky? Yeah, maybe, but I thought it was worth pointing out. Another thing I was told about and was able to confirm while I was there was about the rivets. Yes, they do in fact rivet them directly against the barrel. For those of you who don't build, front trunnion rivets are supposed to be done from the inside with the barrel out of the trunnion in order to access them. IO skips this step and rivets them directly against the barrel for time's sake. The phrase I heard used to refer to this is using the barrel as a bucking bar. This is a no-no, and is probably why so many of their front trunnion rivets are either out of spec or look folded over slightly to one side. Another concerning fact about mm. the rivets is that the rear trunnion long rivet was spun down almost flat and then crushed. That explains kind of the pancake look a lot of their rear trunnion rivets have. It's not the right way to do it, and frankly, I'm not even sure how it saves time. I know why a lot of this is done in a cheaper way. IO appeals to a market of casual gun slash AK owners who only put a few hundred rounds through their gun every year. They're casual shooters. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you're a serious shooter who puts a few thousand rounds through his gun every couple of months, cheaper can get dangerous quickly. I know that you get what you pay for, but it really hurts me sometimes to see quality sacrificed to maintain a price point, especially in the AK market. The Hope. Among the other things discussed was the brand new Vice President Eduardo, who previously oversaw production at Taurus in South America. Eduardo was new to the platform, but seemed very receptive to suggestion and critique. I'm genuinely interested in seeing what kind of changes he can make around the place. Some people say they're great, some people say they're the worst, but what you just heard was the truth about IO. If you like this video, please let me know, or if you've got your own experience with an IO rifle, please let me know in the comments. I'm interested to hear it. And if you've got ideas on what I could maybe do for a follow-up to this video, please let me know. I'm all ears. Right. Until then, I will see you guys in the next video. Oh, yeah, and big thanks to Kalashnikov for coming out and helping me film. It was really awesome. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate it, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks. The AK guy. So, I, I'm still wondering, his channel used to be called The AK Guy? Because, uh... That seems to be like what everyone's referring to him as back then. You still see some people refer to him occasionally as that, but I feel like now they just call him Herrera or Brandon. Um, yeah, I'd never heard of this company before. I didn't realize they were so controversial. Judging by the comments, people do not seem to like them. Um, but I, I'd literally never heard of them before. But anyway, let me know what you think below. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.